Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to Dream Career Talk Show. Dream Career Talk Show is about building your dream career, which is much beyond getting a job. Here on this show, we are going to have industry experts from various domains who will be sharing their knowledge, their experiences, their challenges, their failures and success so that it can help others in their career journey. This show is to help corporate professionals expand their context get clarity, direction, hope, inspiration, and of course, the right steps to build their dream careers. Now, when we talk about dream career, when we talk about organizations, one very important aspect that helps organizations to help their employees grow is organizational culture. Now, what is organizational culture? Why is organizational culture important? How do people pick up organizational culture? how organizational culture can help employees to grow. To understand and discuss about organizational culture, we have our today's guest, Vimal Shah, who believes in strong organization culture and in the growth of employees. Vimal works for a software MNC headquartered in New York, USA. He started his career as a developer and, come, and he has come a long way currently working as an AVP product services. Vimal leads teams performing vital business functions such as project implementation, client support, resource planning, digital presence, assisting in sales activities and overall offshore operations. He promotes initiatives stimulating growth for the company and the employees. His colleagues know him as a highly approachable person and a simple person to work with. Vimal likes socializing, holidaying, parties, long drives, social media, experimenting with new initiatives. So today we have Vimal who is going to help us with organization culture and how this can help in employees growth. So Vimal, welcome to Dream Career Talk Show. Thank you very much. Good evening, Fatha, and good evening, everybody who is watching the show right now live. Thank you for joining in. And uh, I'm really delighted to have uh, me, you have you you have been invited on this particular show of yours. I am really expressing my gratitude to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vimal. And uh, this topic is uh, very close to my heart as well. Organization, culture, right? And um, when we were talking um, a few days back, when we were talking about this, I saw the kind of passion you have for employees, their growth and organization culture. How can we improve this? So this is amazing. Uh, in a in a little bit of time, we will get into that. But um, let's start with your career journey. How did you get started with your career? And uh, how has the journey been so far? Yeah, sure. So, yes, uh, Fatha. So, myself is kind of, I'm born and brought up in Mumbai here in India. And I belong to a Gujarati family, right? So, typically, everybody has their thing. It is most of the Gujus are into the business uh, business world. I mean, they all have some of the other business they are doing. And of course, even my father also had a business of his own, right? But since the my childhood days, in fact, I was more inclined towards uh, engineering, maybe a little of uh, rather more technical stuff. Let me put it that way. So it could be on the mechanic side or it could be something to do with numbers or something here and there, right? So and in fact, I've changed four schools in my uh, overall school life just because of moving around of course within bombay itself but still at least i've got a chance to be a part of four different schools so mm -hmm. after my school or rather during my final or rather ninth and tenth standards i was getting excited because computers were kind of really becoming part of everyone's lives right so i mean uh, i wanted to learn as to what these things are and how does it uh, do the stuff that it does and Basically, on those times, I mean, even smaller, smaller things, I mean, today we might not even look at it. I mean, those look like miracles. In fact, yeah, it does a lot of things because things we used to do manually, I mean, it does in fraction of seconds and stuff like that. So my parents were very supportive. In fact, yeah, they let me do certain courses in the school while I was there. But again, I mean, that traditional mindset continued. They're like, okay, after the school, what next? Because we were just given choices, commerce, science, and arts, right? So, I mean, there was no other option that we were given at. And now, though we were interested in something else, there was not much guidance at that time. And I was kind of asked, if you need to get into commerce only because we are going to do business later on. Okay, so, of course, though my interest was somewhere else, but at least those were the days. I mean, this was way back in uh, 1988, right? So... 
this was too far back so again i agreed upon it and i joined uh, the commerce stream and uh, of course i went through all the grinds in like accounting and uh, finance and whatever was to be there uh, as a part of the curriculum i did it of course the interest was still lying that like okay i had to do in computers right well i was not sure computers meaning computers it could be hardware it could be software it could be anything i had no clarity to be honest so again then of course while my commerce thing was going on at that time itself during my final year i said no i want to definitely try something which is there because i do not want to get into uh, the commerce line or i don't want to do business as of right now i do not think i'll be able to make it then later on maybe if there is a if it permits i mean if the situation is there then i can get into the business but let me learn what i want to okay so i went into the uh, i did a course uh, in it i did a diploma course and then i was feeling really great in fact the people whom i started interacting with they were also really great in fact there were two or three real good brainers in fact they tried to do a lot of things on their own i mean way beyond what the homework or the class work all the sir was teaching us right so in fact it was exciting it was getting more and more exciting and again now this also came to an end okay now my diploma came to an end and i am like okay let's start looking out for a job or something into it industry and they were also helping us do the placements and all but uh, the thing is i landed up into stock markets <laughs> there was a there was one of my very close uh, Uh, uncle i mean he said in fact we are definitely interested in somebody who would be kind of a person who would be belong to the family because it is more towards trust and all right and it is having a great career so i agreed upon that and then leaving aside like okay i'll do things with the computers later on when the time comes but at least for now i had to kind of take that up because it was a good opportunity for me at that time so that at least i start making money and then maybe later on because i was already a graduate so of course i had to kind of do something on those lines so what i did is i joined that and uh, what i did was i was the privileged guy i mean i am not sure if many people who are looking at this there used to be a trading ring okay i mean there was a bombay stock exchange there used to be a trading ring where used to be an outcry Uh, the system in fact there was no online trading no online dealing everything was you had to be in that trading floor and people who were doing client businesses they used to come to us and they used to do the trade and we used to write it on a book right at least what trade we did with which company uh, with which uh, broker and it was really good and the experience was phenomenal in fact from 10 to 330 it was like kind of a fish market i mean it was so uh-huh. so engrossing and in fact even we felt that okay where am i but it was exciting to be honest and uh, after office stuff i mean just managing the settlements and all these things was also really really great but again as i said my inclination was there towards joining a software so again after four or five years that started coming up because even things were going online for the trading and so i said in fact it's better to move on rather than kind of continuing here because of course that industry also was good but i was not able to put up my creativity into that right whatever mm-hmm. i was uh, passionate about whatever i had learned about whatever i wanted to kind of do that probably was not the place to experiment right because of course i mean that was a finance market and stuff like that but it was more towards trading so i did not get into that uh, area and slowly i said that like okay no i have to kind of move out now so i quit that job right which was more like a job and a business also because i was myself doing the trading right and then i kind of picked up another uh, e-commerce course i mean in year, way back in 2000 the y2k stuff came up and then there was this other stuff which was going about the it industry so i joined that and uh, it was good it was a 6 to 8 months kind of a uh, course and i was loving everything that i was learning there and then from there i got a placement in a company here in andheri east it's uh, my company's name is house of code it is uh, it's an export it's in an export unit and uh, we have our head office in new york with our offices in new jersey as well so i got placed there and uh, of course i mean starting something exciting but at the same time it was a reset for my career right because i already after my graduation had five years into one industry one year i took a break just to do studies about the new stuff and then i kind of joined this thing so yes it was a reset for me career reset but yes it was exciting because i always wanted to do that 
and i started with that journey and of course initial 6 months 8 months one year i mean it was very very tough for me to be honest first of all because my academics was not aligned with what the industry expectations are i mean what you want to start with is basically looking for uh, engineering background and stuff like that while i was a commerce graduate but that did not impact me much i knew i had to continue and now there is no going back now because after all these hiccups or whatever you could say in fact i have landed into the place where i wanted to actually grow and prosper so now there is no going back vimal come on now you have to do whatever you have to but nothing else is possible now so good i think i joined this company house code and uh, i started kind of picking up things uh, or rather i had learned the coding the development stuff and then i kind of got into live projects i started getting some uh, hands on to tasks or challenges which i had never done before initial time as i said was tough because i was not able to match then others started taking up that like oh, at least it might not be possible to complete things in time so at least let somebody else take it up style, uh, kind of things but that kind of hit me a lot that like okay i mean if this continues i will not be able to sustain this so then again i put too much of my energy or rather everything that i could do and then i think i picked up really well and just another couple of years i was kind of getting the acknowledgement for the work done i got a recognition and i got an opportunity to travel to the us for a client visit and i was like wow in fact this is something what uh, probably people are after it i was never kind of trying for that but still i mean the work showed up that is what gave me the maximum satisfaction and it gave me a boost they're like okay whatever i am doing is in line with what the expectations are and like probably i am on track now right. right so that i got an opportunity i went to the us and of course my development stuff was there i met the clients i learned the new ways of working how organizations kind of work there there are lot of differences in between which we uh, we work and how the people there work right so of course i mean there was a lot of learning also and at the same time i got an opportunity to kind of play a role in understanding the way the businesses are done and then kind of bridging the gap between it and uh, the business because what is important into an it is like everybody can become a technical guru in fact they can become great but at least what is essential is kind of fusing the business into that in fact how you can merge the business and the it together to have fruitful and meaningful solutions right so that was an opportunity that i got and i was really happy about it yeah i mean that was just the start i mean followed by that later on that was the domain of a supply chain management system later on i was uh, uh, put into another domain which were again the same company uh, hoc but it was a different domain it is into the energy trading and financial services market so of course that was really a growing thing it was into finance it was into energy trading but it was very much different from what i used to do before but good in fact that also gave opened the doors i again traveled to the us and i kind of visited the clients sat with them had discussions on how the things are being done by them and then that there were we basically kind of were understanding their manual processes and then we were uh, using our projects or our programs or softwares we used to automate that right so that is what we even continue to do even today so my journey i started as a junior developer and kind of moved on slowly and slowly again getting into the business then kind of fusing it then i started managing the projects then i interaction with the clients of course was a routine thing so after that it was very much uh, enjoyable in fact i was really happy about the decision that i had taken way back in 99 and i felt yeah it was great that like okay i am moving where i wanted to so slowly and steadily of course we have to keep growing so that at least we open doors for other people to kind of even come up and today i am kind of belonging to the same company even after 20 years and uh, i am currently doing the strategic projects i'm a part of the strategic projects and i manage crucial business uh, teams for project implementations the client support and then the overall operational efficiency and the infrastructure also is something that i look upon so i have got a lot of exposure into various areas of the company or an organization and that is what has helped me kind of even come to here come on this show that like i can share something how culture helps each other or how it is needed for people to stick around right in an organization yeah right. so that's where i am very impressive uh, from the start like doing your commerce education 
and then getting into trading uh, learning the it stuff first but then later getting into trading and again giving up on trading business getting into job but uh, i guess you have been able to integrate uh, the whatever you have got from the gujarati family background right the business yeah. <laughs> where you are integrating right. that with it and uh, i think that's where you are helping the organization to grow and uh, business to grow i think that's that's a wonderful journey thank you so great and uh, yeah organization culture we want to talk about so um, pimal what is organization culture all about right when we talk organizational culture what is it all about first of all i would start with something with a one liner i mean how a character is for an individual and a family a culture is for an organization and its employees right i would see it that way because in a family in fact everything is we are one right in fact whatever there might be trouble makers there might be peace makers there might be people who are like helping each other and whatever a similar way an organization also has a lot of departments a lot of people i mean it's quite huge in terms of uh, the structure or the size as compared to a family but that is how i relate it to because overall the end goal is that the culture is something that keeps the people integrated it keeps the family together it kind of values each other's opinions it is able to guide each other uh, the family or the values are acknowledged and they are able to guide each other and at the same time they are also wanting everybody to grow they want them to be pushed so that like overall the benefit is to the entire family and the individuals also similarly i culture for an organization i would say is creating an atmosphere giving freedom to the people okay so that like creativity can come out of the people okay because if it is just a set thing that like okay this is how it has to operate and there's no other way then you will only get this much whichever is known that like okay if i do x number of steps this is where i am going to reach but having a culture of openness of having transparency of giving freedom to the people that opens a lot many doors because every one every individual has some or the other specialty they are creative in their own different ways being a part of the organization it should give the culture should be such that it is give them the it gives them the feeling of belongingness right I and mean, that is what is important that like i belong to this organization it is like owning things without literally owning the company right so that is what culture plays a vital role because that is something that keeps the employees attached with the company and of course the company benefits also so it's like plus and minus but overall if you see the culture is something that is shown in the behavior in the kind of uh, results the outcome the whatever how the how the company progresses because the outer world only sees what this company is doing and how is it doing and what value is it adding so, but what goes inside is the overall engineering and that's where the culture plays the most important role i mean everybody does good amount i mean their respective business functions so everybody has to just work together in a harmonious way so that like the growth is there for individuals for departments for companies and overall the business keeps on growing and flourishing that is what generally the end goal for everything every company is right and um, i think uh, some of the very important points you have touched upon right but uh, i want to pick here the first point you spoke about the culture that's openness right what according yes. to you is openness and how can a company like bring in that culture of openness right okay so as i said in fact if there is a uh, there is a uh, there are employees who are joining our company right of course it cannot be just left open they like okay you do whatever you want because final goal is kind of executing projects getting the value i mean contributing the employees need to contribute and they can try to improve the processes right in fact however it is being done and at the final stage i mean what is essential is that like the projects are executed well the employees are happy and the companies our clients are also happy right this is what the end goal is so the employees who are joining our company will get used to the policies they'll get used to to the environment they'll get used to to the uh, 
surrounding the peers and it accounts for everything the company practices the people whom they are working with the peers the seniors the managers and whichever teams and slowly of course depending on the role they'll start interacting with the outside uh, i mean the clients also so when i come to openness it is generally coming from start it has to start from the company's end the company has to kind of the organization has to let or make the employee realize that we are open to ideas that you might have the company cannot be sticking that like okay this the process whichever is set is a hundred percent foolproof process and nothing beyond this can be done right and at the same time the people the employees have to have that openness to tell them see becoming an audience in just cribbing about things complaining about things not in order i mean it is very easy right because i mean but what we need is we need the employees to be a part of the game and then identify that, okay, this is something that can be improved or this is something which may be redundant. This is something which can be kind of just taken off if we are just uh, not getting any value out of this. So when I meant openness, the openness actually come out, comes out of both the bases. The company has to make the employees realize that, like, okay, you are important. Maybe whatever you kind of suggest or whatever your opinions are, whatever your recommendations are, we are ready to listen. Okay, and then it can go through debate. It can go through maybe a round of iterations about discussions. Maybe the best can be picked up and it can be implemented. So that basically is what the openness talks about. And having listened to the employee, getting it implemented, okay, and both ways it's a win-win situation. That brings the employee and employer closer. Yeah, I think um, this is completely what I can agree with because and one important the point you mentioned here is openness. First, the employer is actually uh, trying to be open and extending that hand or starting first. But uh, I think the employees also, as you rightly said, should open themselves, take that uh, ownership and then also try to see how they can contribute. I think this is a wonderful yes. point here. And um, you also said about when people join the company and all of this. So how can a company like or what uh, is that you suggest when companies do the induction or the initial training? Uh, is this the time when companies have to like build this culture or does this culture like happen by seeing people? How is that implemented? I mean, in my opinion, I would say it should be after some time. It cannot be an immediate thing. Because the person who has newly joined our organization, he needs to get used to what the current functioning is. Otherwise, what happens, in fact, if he has its own way of working and there might be because, I mean, he might be just one or two or three, but he would be working with a team of 25 people. Maybe he might not fit in at that time. Right. So at least being a part of the game for some time and then later on, if there are recommendations, it might be there. Because at the time of joining itself, if there are open, uh, if we talk about that, okay, he can come up with recommendations and all, maybe that is already in place, but he is not just uh, seen it, or maybe he is not just yet exposed to that particular feature. Right. So, yeah, it has to happen after some time. Yeah, makes sense. Like uh, first getting to understand the organization and the employee tries to then yeah. like uh, see if something is already existing or not, and then coming up with their ideas. You're right. And uh, now, why is organization culture important? How does it matter? Yeah. Again, going to my earlier statement, how it is for uh, the organization, the culture is kind of the thing that kind of keeps things well. The businesses has to grow, right? Because if the culture is right, I mean, it will give the right platform for the employees to open themselves, contribute in the right way, interact with the right people okay uh, and again i mean being transparent because see at times what happens as i said in fact there are so many people who are uh, there in your company but you don't know what potential they do have right and there are sometimes there are people who are introverts in fact they would just be kind of standing up when they were uh, they are asked to kind of do a thing and they might do it phenomenally fantastically right but the, such kind of people are the ones who may have a lot within them. And then there are other people also who might have a lot within them, but they don't know that like, okay, am I allowed to kind of change something? Am I allowed to kind of give my suggestions to something? Am I allowed to kind of give my opinions to something? Or am I allowed to even say it like, okay, this is not right. 
because generally an employee who joins i mean he may he might feel that like okay if i give this suggestion i might be seen differently i mean i might be seen as a negative person or maybe i am just cribbing about the existing processes and stuff like that so which actually blocks everything in fact those kind of people might uh, be most creative in fact they might be the ones who can contribute the max but just because of their belief they like okay things are not uh, of i mean favorable that i should not be saying it in fact the company might be at loss but overall in fact people contribute their ideas if people kind of say come up with what they think about the company and they are they are also maybe coming from somewhere or the other and everybody as i had initially mentioned like everybody has some or the other specialty so a uh, open culture a good culture gives them the platform they're like okay this is what i this is where i can experiment what i want to and overall if you see i mean any organization that we belong to is our second family i'm sure we agree right, right. because i mean just right. or rather at times it is more time we are spending with the organization and its processes or or for its work than our actual family so of course we try to balance it but it's, it is also a family right so being a part of the family making sure that like okay you are doing your bit that should be enough and at times what happens people overthink in fact they might also think that like okay i might uh, whatever ideas i might have they might not be taken it rightly because of course i mean that belief right that like okay i mean i might not have done it before so even if i am doing it now it might not work and my idea might be rejected but that might not be the case because i mean we have not if we give an opportunity to that person that like okay why don't you at least share and then maybe we can improve it no ideas are there which cannot go through discussion because it might be the stupidest of the idea but it is the idea that actually takes shape right so i mean i would like to just clarify it with one of an example in fact in my organization itself i mean there are people who join as uh, fresh fresher guys and then there are some uh, medium experienced people and then there are high experience and then there are managers right so earlier in fact uh, the induction kind of showed them that like okay if they have any kind of problems if the fresher people who have any problems in fact they need to connect with the uh, second or third level of managers depending on the kind of role that they are performing because they would be the ones who would be guiding them the more uh, in the right fashion but slowly this became a bottleneck right i mean it became a bottleneck because the senior guys whoever were there are some or the other time or rather they are not available because they are handling some client projects and there are production issues and they are dealing with the more important business functions so they cannot give time to this one right so what happened is they like okay these guys i mean whoever were there uh, i mean whoever are there as freshers i mean they found it difficult that like okay i mean because they had that hesitance also i mean i have been told to talk to person x but that guy is busy and he is occupied so i won't even escalate if i escalate it would look bad they like okay this guy is not uh, answering me something like that i mean that mindset would be there so one of our uh, teammates my teammates in fact he of course we all are a part of this journey but of course he identified that like okay how we can improvise this he made a nice plan and the plan was very very simple it is just that somebody has to put that thought and everything can get streamlined so what he did i mean he brought up something as buddies okay so for everything every program or every uh, kind of a query or every kind of a problem that a person would be facing everyone is assigned a single buddy who is just a level above him or maybe a peer who is a little more experienced who has more understanding of this and that buddy that person if he has a problem he needs to go to his buddy now that buddy who is the level 2 also has another buddy and everything reaches uh-huh. till the top okay so it is a superb network i mean it is a spider web it's a network of that so suppose if the uh, the buddy one does not understand he needs to approach the buddy two if he is not having that and if not then he needs to go to the buddy 3 so now if buddy 3 has an answer of course i mean at that level he should have an answer so now whenever the buddy 3 kind of responds he involves buddy 2 1 and the actual person who had the problem right so this thing kind of gets clarified it is just a one timer thing and it kind of solves a lot of problem and it is really a commendable effort just to think out something out of the normal makes this change possible right so again i mean making this particular thing possible is only because he knew that like okay he can think and propose of an idea 
he proposed us an idea and that it was in one shot it was just approved i mean it is phenomenal because we know in fact we are maybe we were not uh, knowing the impact of why these people were not able to work and for what reason the problems were kind of not getting resolved or why the things were getting delayed but now with this particular thing in place i mean everything is working in order and it is working as expected right, right? so i mean that is what opens doors so i mean being creative being thoughtful about this is uh, or rather when the organization tells they're like okay you we are open for your ideas you can come to us right so that makes a lot of difference and then the genius minds open up otherwise you could have just stayed with him or maybe he might not have even spent that effort or even if he had an idea he would have never shared it with us right yeah i think this this is a very good example like and um, the uh, some of the lessons i've got from here is ideas need not be like complicated complex or big right they can be small ideas right implemented yeah. in an organization can bring that big change right? the True. small buddy idea somebody came up with now it has helped mm-hmm. the organization in big ways yeah absolutely and it has impacted all the teams it is not that like okay only it was restricted to a particular team it was to everyone right right this is amazing because i know when uh, people join initially they are lost they don't find a uh, place to get their answers they have to run behind hr and other people but i think this small idea can help a lot of people uh, so okay. that's good and uh, now when we come back to the organization culture uh, who is responsible for this organization culture as per you like is it the hr is it the leaders is it like uh, the managers or is it the employees to build this culture see it has to come from the top right because uh, whatever initiatives if you have a vision that you want to grow you want to have a fantastic workplace for the employees it has to be a vision from somebody from the mostly from the top management right the rest everybody has to come up with the ideas how we can do this because suppose if the hr of hr of course plays a very very vital role here but if it it cannot be blamed only on the hr that only you are responsible to improve the workplace what if uh, he or she has a very good idea but they are not approved they are not acknowledged they are not kind of even given that much of uh, leverage then even everything dies down i mean people try once twice thrice four times but then if things don't work if even they feel they like okay what's the point in kind of doing recommendations if i know it in advance that it is not going to work out right so everybody has to be at least the hr the top management the senior level management they all to have they all have to be in agreement that like this is what we are looking out for our workplace to be because there are a lot of teams working there are the sales teams who are working who are interacting with the clients right so for getting more business but then maybe they are very successful in getting more business but as an organization if your people the people who are going to actually do the work actually do the execution if they are not uh, been able to do what they are supposed to do well correct then the thing will die down in fact having just getting more business and not doing it will just make uh, just bring disappointments Right? right so essentially it is the top management the senior level management of course the hr and uh, the employees will soon become a part of it if it is communicated rightly right because uh, just having a okay, not announce okay it's open culture just come up with your ideas do this do that i mean here it is action speaks louder than words right because if somebody comes up with a point and uh, then if you acknowledge if you discuss if you kind of appreciate that i mean that is when the people kind of feel that like okay these are the kind of things which is uh, acknowledged and rewarded in my company so then others will also be motivated to do it we are open to ideas just telling that does not uh, make much sense because they have to see it materializing right so right. of course employees are there they are also responsible equally responsible and again i mean to add to this particular point itself the employees are responsible because the if it is an open culture if it is brought up from the top senior management hr they have to also support it correct because most of the times what happens is that like okay there are good initiatives but the employees have their own side of story that like okay this might not work why should we do this and they are sometimes becoming an outsider and they prefer doing commenting right they might just give comments that this is the flaw this is not this is how it should be done rather be a part of it and then try to improve correct so just 
supporting the organization in whatever they are attempting to is the right way of doing it so of course even employees are very much important part of part of this entire arrangement the culture arrangement yeah i am i am loving this conversation and uh, when when we are hearing from the leaders right who are implementing the culture and coming from there um, i think it gives a lot of uh, perspective and knowledge because one challenge i have seen with some of the employees is like i don't want to follow as you mm-hmm. rightly said right being the external yeah. world and trying to see like mm-hmm. i don't want to adopt it i don't want to get into it now they are getting to understand why it is important for even the employees to uh, to be a part of that idea right and then uh, right. supporting that particular initiative or the culture actually helps the entire organization so that's very yes. good and um, i i completely agree with the approach that you have spoken it comes like a top down approach uh, where leaders have authority influence and when it comes through that uh, it actually yeah. gets implemented also very well you're right true and again it spreads right in fact which uh, at the employees whoever are working they can spread it to the people who are newly joining right as i said i mean it cannot right. be announced that like okay we are having this culture we are having this i mean there are initiatives which actually should signal to the employees that like okay these are something which are uh, positive things for us to kind of explore new things right so in fact it has to flow in the same fashion right so from top to bottom and then at certain levels it has to be across it has to be horizontal because not everybody is the same that's that's right and completely agree with that now you also mentioned about when you said from top to bottom right you said vision uh, that comes from the leaders now uh, vision mission we talk a lot in the organizations i mean uh, when it is the organization but a lot of people don't even understand or know the vision or mission and all why is it important and how important is it com- to communicate this vision and mission to em- uh, uh, employees now right okay see the from the organization perspective what matters is business right in fact we have to get business from the external world so that at least uh, the company flourishes we are company flourishes is fine but the motive is more towards servicing the customers giving them value for whatever they are coming or rather approaching us to i mean that is what gives fulfillment of the work correct so of course revenues profits everything of course is there but the fulfillment is something which is priceless right because the satisfaction of something that we have done some good words we get from our clients they are like so touchy they like okay we feel the kind of the amount of the immense help that we were able to do it for them right so that is what gives us the most uh, most satisfaction so that's where i come to the fulfillment point now coming to the uh, point of uh, having a how do i push it in this way so okay so now again from the uh, business front uh, business point of view the companies will do well but going one level down or two levels down three levels down when everybody has to work together jointly what becomes important is where are we heading to okay we are not right. working with one client or two client or three clients at most we want to grow okay i mean there will be very few companies which are like just intact okay i mean we have just two clients and we are fine we don't want to grow but the vision is important at what are we trying to do in the market i mean i just would quote i mean the jim ron had said right in one of his quotes i mean you are compensated for the value you give to the marketplace right so that holds true for an individual and for an organization as well right so the company's vision as to what it is looking towards and the mission on which it is working all the employees or rather everybody each and every person belonging to that organization has to work towards that single goal right so it has to be communicated rightly to everybody so that like okay there might be uh, differences in way the people are thinking maybe i am doing a role and uh, my peer also is doing the same role but then there might be differences because i might be working towards the uh, mission of my company but at the same time he might not be on board with that particular mission because maybe he has his different idea but then he might feel that i am doing something wrong and i might feel that he might be doing something wrong so if the vision and mission is clear in fact that is what will prove it then in fact even he has the uh, the uh, the facility to even let me know that like okay how this can be done in a better way right so if that mission is clear 
and it has to be clear for everybody it has to be a top down approach because the mission and vision are set up by the senior management by the owners of the company by the higher management so that is to flow to the bottom because each and everybody's contribution makes an organization i mean only the top management cannot run only the seniors cannot run only the developers cannot run or it, it has to work hand in hand right so that is why it is very very important that everybody has a knowledge about what your company's mission is and whoever is working are doing their respective roles to head towards that particular mission yeah and uh, i think this is very important again for employees to understand as you said right having that mission and vision understood or communicated to the employees so that they are aligned with the company's vision and mission and understand the big picture rather than just maybe running behind results where the company is talking about quality right where right. somebody is running behind revenue where the company is talking maybe about customer excellence right so mm -hmm. understanding what is the vision what is the mission what are the values of the company i think that that's uh, really important and uh, right. you have mentioned about the values and you were talking yes. also about uh, rewarding the right behaviors right? how important is it to reward the right behaviors and uh, how do you identify and reward the right behaviors see right behavior again uh, if you are asked to do a task x everybody would do that right in right. fact uh, so we know i mean what is the end goal if you are if uh, fata is given some task i mean and i am giving you some timeline in fact if you finish in that particular timeline it's fine i mean that was expected if you are not doing it of course you are maybe missing out something maybe you need to do it more better way in the next time so that you are unable to match that particular timeline so you will be able to be gauged okay if you do certain things faster okay that might be helping the customer or helping the company in terms of cost right in fact you might be saving your resource cost you might be doing things more efficiently okay and with the same results or even better results maybe whatever you were doing i mean that might be a help to somebody else so the future projects or future implementations like this which ever come to uh, come to our way in fact they will also be able to utilize the new technique or the new method which this person has implemented so such kind of things have to be highlighted and it has to be rewarded okay so the thing i just mentioned about the buddy th buddy thing the scheme that uh, somebody kind of thought about it of course that is something which is a rewardable thing because that saved a lot of energy and a, served a lot of time and at the same time it kind of educates a lot of people in the chain right so such right. kind of thoughts are to be rewarded and acknowledged i mean it can be a rewards and recognition i mean you might give a certificate to them you might just in a town hall meeting just announce to everybody that like okay this is what was done and that basically opens door doors for others also because maybe it's a 100 people or a 200 or a 500 people company in a small department of let's say 25 people or 50 people somebody has done really great but how would the other guys know right so i mean the platform is a open platform meaning it's a common platform where everybody kind of is a part of it and they should be able to let everyone know or rather understand that like, okay this person from x department has done this great job and so people will be motivated to even do things in their own uh, own world and maybe the next time they might be looking forward to a reward right so it has to be done openly yeah yeah absolutely and uh... uh when you spoke about uh, recognizing appre uh, appreciating and then rewarding the behaviors now one of the biggest challenge of vimal i have seen is people feel uh, the top performers many times feel forget about appreciation forget about recognition i am not even acknowledged for my work many a times so how can leaders right. build that culture that people are at least acknowledged right and then the next steps is like you are appreciating them you are rewarding them and again there would be a certain criteria for rewarding and all so do you think that acknowledgement is very important and how can somebody acknowledge as a leader to their employees it is very very important uh, acknowledging because we should never wait for such big town hall meetings or big uh, place where you could appreciate a person or rather wait for it somebody has uh, done something good today and i'll wait for the next two months for a meeting to happen and i will announce i may be announcing it there but what is done right now i mean that has to be kind of appreciated right away so for that we need to stay connected for every leader i mean it is very very important to stay connected with not just uh, the one level down at least the people whom the 
managers are also kind of managing right so whatever is there the sense of appreciation only comes when it is appreciated at that very moment right, right? so because in our company also we have uh, my seniors who also believe in the same strategy like okay, if something is done right just do good anything that you do you could do good at that very moment and later on if it has to be resulting into a certification or a, uh, maybe some kind of a reward that can still happen it can happen at its own time but at least when that person has done just reward him at that very moment or at least say some good words in front of at least his department his team and whenever it is coming from a leader i mean that itself says a lot in fact that person would feel that like okay i am getting the respect for the work that i am doing right so i am getting that appreciation that acknowledgement without having to wait for the other thing of course i mean however big the function is going to happen after two months i mean the satisfaction of getting a reward at the time when i've done something is way more higher right yeah and i love whatever you have said this because i think this can help leaders big time though it's a small tip whatever you have shared don't yeah. wait for the town hall to come don't wait for the rewards and recognition even to happen right acknowledge right. immediately right when you acknowledge at the right time maybe you are saving your employees maybe you are helping employee retention maybe you are True. boosting their confidence motivation you never know when people get hurt right and when people yeah. feel that we are not even acknowledged i think this is a very right. strong point you shared here and yes. um, when we talk about rewarding the right behavior uh, uh, well one of the challenge uh, that in the organizations is seen as bad apples right mm -hmm. we all know everywhere there are bad apples uh, a bad fish can spoil the entire pond right so now yeah. if there is a wrong, wrong behavior right mm -hmm. so many a times leaders miss to actually um, take action on the wrong behavior now how important is to punish the wrong behavior if you have to build the organization culture and continue with that culture with the values and uh, all of that all right a uh, very good question actually uh, the thing is of course bad apples may be there they are there and they continue to be there right so basically they are the same kind of people which all the other employees are they are not wanting anything to happen bad but just because they cannot do something good they might be even trying to stop the others from doing good okay there is a different way of looking at it but at the same time what is important is if it has been identified that there is a bad apple or there is some kind of negativity being spread across in fact we believe to immediately summon them talk to them and just clarify that this is what we are knowing and uh, this of course is not a behavior that can be forget appreciation it cannot be even tolerated okay because while everything is good in fact it is very easy for leaders to kind of miss out out of a team of 100 people missing out two or three people who might be doing things wrong and when it comes to the attention of them they have to take any action they they have to take an action because and if the direct interaction is there they like okay then the person knows that like okay it is already identified that i am doing something bad maybe that might change it okay and generally it happens i mean it changes their behavior it makes the shift in them and they kind of try to behave differently they try to become more productive and they can even start spreading positivity okay so for a certain uh, weaknesses that i may have i may not be able to do a certain thing right but that does not mean that i would try to stop somebody else also from doing it because then it becomes the behavior of or rather the mindset or the attitude is your loss is my gain right so if i can right. say something bad about some one i mean of course maybe i can take the leverage and like okay i might have done something good right so those things are of course not a welcome thing in any organization because every organization uh, has a zest to kind of grow the zeal to grow they want to expand and they want to kind of make everything the best right possible by them so yeah at dealing with bad apples it is very important to deal it at the time it has been identified it cannot be delayed right yeah and i can clearly see the kind of experience that you come from and uh, sharing this important tips here right. so thank you for that and um, the uh, one of the biggest challenge i see at times is when uh, your top performers are the bad apples right they become the bottleneck in your business they are the top performers but they are actually uh, spreading the wrong culture 
because as we know mm-hmm. it's like top down right and right. top performers sometimes they are the oldest employees in the organization and they are the people who actually making it flow in the wrong way and this behavior is being right. built so how can leaders handle this because one one side you have the top performer on other side they you have the organization culture your values so how right. do you balance between them and what kind of decisions do you take uh, when this uh, mm-hmm. kind of uh, situation arises right see what can be done in such a situation of course it might be case to case it might it is not a set rule that this is what it can be done but one of the things it can be done is like okay if it is about the attitude you know, a person who has gotten to the top by his work by his performance and everything it is good it is great i mean for that person but that does not mean that he can kind of just start doing whatever he wants so at the same time what we can do is at least give opportunities to the others we need to identify who are the other prospective people who are also good but maybe it's just a matter of giving an opportunity i mean some person went on top because he got an opportunity and of course he was good at that uh, at the same time but suppose there are people who are uh, good but they have not got an opportunity so in that case of course we should be kind of trying the other people also correct so that like at least that sense of a little kind of a, i mean they should be getting a feeling that like okay i am not the only one okay because right. if that thing kind of uh, comes to the head i mean it is bad right so at least this is one of the things which can be done the other thing i would like to say like what can be also done is like okay he has to be made realize that right? whatever you have come up here as i mean of course it is the part of everyone's contribution not a single person can do everything in fact he cannot claim if i am telling that i am the best manager it is impossible in fact my team will just vanish tomorrow and like i mean i i'll be like kind of uh, I, i'll be kind of useless right so it cannot be done so what matters is a teamwork is what matters so if somebody is on top i mean he is on top because of the team he has because of the kind of work he has done with the people and we also believe in one another thing is i mean from the culture point of view one of the things that i also wanted to mention at the start when i said about what culture means to an organization i mean having the feeling of let's say if i am telling you uh, will you work for me as against will you work with me i mean that gives that satisfaction right why don't you work with me right with that me. gives they yeah. like okay so that my leaders in fact whom i work with even they are of the same attitude and same kind of a thing is kind of wanting to flow across the organization we all need to work together of course we might be doing different roles but we work with me is what makes the difference work for me again that gap or the hierarchy comes into picture right yeah. so work for me and work with me is a uh, day and night of difference right right and this is very powerful what you have shared and uh, i know it does not come easy it's it comes through a lot of experience and uh, great leaders have this whatever you are talking about right uh, the with me culture though it is yeah. just replacing one small word for and with but it clearly yeah. shows the attitude the behavior the culture of that particular organization or the leadership where it is not right. coming from ego but it is coming from the place of where abundance like you want to take everybody along with you and build that culture exactly. of team bonding trust and all of that yeah so this is amazing i'm i'm loving this conversation right and uh, when we talk about culture we also uh, talk about one important element trust how can organizations build trust with their employees first of all um, the mission of an organization i mean what are the values they believe in of course so the employees whoever are a part of the organization they have to at least be following those values right because giving a work to somebody i mean of course he being kind of being able to take up that uh, work or their task maybe out of his skills okay anybody could get that task done whoever is capable or who is able whoever is able to kind of having that skills he'll be able to do that task but then whoever is with your values right so the values of the companies are to be understood for example in fact we have these values we have integrity passion and joy these are the three wow. values that we believe in right so integrity is like believing with uh, or rather doing genuinely i mean whatever is there i mean we have to be transparent and that is what our approach is not just with our employees even with our customers and the clients right whom we work with right so that thing has to flow so the employees have to know that they like okay i mean whatever is being shared is true is genuine is real so at least 
whatever are the regular updates we make sure that like at least it has been passed on to the employees as well so at least it should not happen that like okay they are just given the piece of information that they are supposed to know we are making sure that like at least they are also understanding where we are and how we are moving and you are also a part of us okay so the integrity plays a very vital role passion of course being into this industry or whichever industry forget it for whichever uh, whichever industry a person belongs to i mean that passion is what kind of takes him further and he can also push others forward or even lift others who are below them right so it is the passion because if i want to do something i alone might not be able to do it i need three people with me so i cannot drive them that like okay i have the passion so you have to follow me in fact there might be people who are understanding that like okay this is something which vimal is building great i mean he has a phenomenal idea i mean doing things together of course that is my passion but slowly it can even propagate right so what we believe in they like okay our values i of being passionate we want to ensure that like we understand our customers right we focus on the industry and the domain there where we for which we kind of are making the solutions for and we want to become passionate about the automation or the process or a uh, process automation or the solutions that we give it to them right and the same thing has to be even imbibed by our employees right so that's where passion counts in our case and then finally it is about joy in fact after doing a lot of things if you cannot enjoy if you cannot kind of get the satisfaction if you cannot uh, relish what you have uh, achieved i mean there's no point so we believe in that particular joy as a value for our company as well wow love this three values integrity uh, passion and joy i think very important values here and when you talk about integrity uh, vimal one quick question came to my mind is now if there are employees like some of them uh, might be your top performers but they don't have integrity right on the mm-hmm. other side uh, you have results right how do you actually balance between integrity and results what come first because i have heard from great leaders if it is question of integrity fire the employees immediately right mm-hmm. and uh, how do you see that integrity versus results or uh, success for the organization all right integrity uh, holds the priority for sure because it is not just a one time thing that we are dealing with we want to kind of continue doing business it's not just a one time mm-hmm. so integrity even of, at the cost of maybe losing some revenue is it fine that is fine that is fine because i mean if see it's like not taking action is like promoting that action or whether i am okay with that Right. right so it's rather to stop and kind of be open with the customer clients that okay we cannot deliver and lose the revenue or maybe of course we can ask for some time more yeah like right. so of course powerful. i mean sticking yeah. to the values yeah sticking with the values is very very important yeah man this is powerful whatever you are sharing because you are not taking any action means you are supporting that action right as a leader right. uh, you need to always like take action for uh, whatever your values are so yeah. this is amazing and um, now uh, how do you actually uh, develop whatever trust transparency and all of this how do you bring that organizational culture which can help employees grow like do you have any quick tips or any uh, key areas that we can look at if we have to help the employees grow through the organizational culture i am sure there are going to be a variety of ideas with different organizations but everything it is subjective to the organization what works best for them there is no set rule that like okay it is there you cannot say that like okay i am paying you well so everything has to work well i am giving you a good environment to work so everything is uh, everything has to be kind of well and it has uh, good it is not that way so every company has to know what is the level of their employees what are the skill sets required by their employees and what are the kind of other things that might motivate the employees to stay with the organization and continue to support your culture right so again there will be very uh, many many things uh, like again still the integration uh, interactions to be increased Inter- uh, integrated the uh, having an integrated work environment is important because an organization works well if all the business functions are kind of working in coordination okay even if one or two are kind of off maybe they are not able to follow the Uh, the routine to follow the what do you call the sequence of the operations or the they are not 
with you, uh, with the other departments, then also it, is, it can be a failure, right? So what is important is at least identifying what works best for your employees, what will motivate them and how will it work at the same time, ensuring that your end goal of servicing the clients is continued to be the way it is. I mean, there is no compromise on that side because finally that is what keeps the things going, right? In fact, you can continue for a while. They're like, okay, we are not much worried about the outside world. We just want to have a happy environment and a great environment, but that cannot be continued, right? So maybe if there is a, if the leaders see they're like, okay, things are just slipping out, maybe they can take the remedial actions, but at the same time, ensure they're like, okay, the client, uh, our client works is not compromised, whatever they need to do. Yeah, amazing. And um, the one last question around the culture. Now uh, we have the current scenario, right? The uh, the COVID that striked and then people have been working from home. A lot of fear also was there with many employees that companies are firing. So how can organization take initiatives or how can organizational culture help these employees to stay connected, to uh, still grow in these kind of situations? You're right. Yeah, so of course, I mean, in the last two years, um, we'll be approaching two years in March. So, of course, I mean, yeah. it has changed the, entirely the way the people were working. I mean, initial three, four months just went in by the like, okay, how will we be able to work, right? In fact, of course, people were working, but the collaborative efforts, whichever were put, I mean, being in a central office together, I mean, those were the things, those were the times when the challenges were there as to how will we be there? Because we were not even sure whether how long this would continue. Right. So soon, I mean, the systems came into place. I mean, there were these online connections, the Zoom meetings, the teams, all these kind of tools, the powerful tools which came up with video facility. We are also talking, I mean, face to face right now. I, you might be right. in some part of India and I'm here still sitting here in Mumbai. You are in Bangalore. So it technology made it possible. OK, the world has turned around a lot in minimalistic of time. In fact, the people have kind of uh, adopted the new ways in such a way that like okay i mean life probably would never become to that normal with that it used to be two years before right so almost all the organizations they have to kind of ensure that at least there is good amount of connectivity they are giving whatever they can so that at least the connectivity is there the face-to-face -face conversations are there there are messengers whichever are uh, messengers are possible so something which Cannot be done, cannot be done. In fact, you cannot force the people that like, okay, everybody has to come to the office and kind of start working together. It's not possible. So given the situation, given the circumstances, whatever is the best possible option that the company needs to adopt based on the kind of business it does. So from our end, in fact, we also adopted tools from Microsoft so that is we are able to communicate. We are doing video meetings daily. We are doing status meetings. So we are seeing each other. So at least at that time we are seeing each other so that like it is though, though we are not together but virtually we are and the other good thing that has happened is that like okay people are able to work from the comfort of their homes right earlier it used to be the travel has reduced i mean the travel used to be there that has reduced i mean the flexibility of working from wherever they want to uh, is also kind of possible with this the good part about the data, in fact, data is like gone everywhere now. In fact, you can have internet everywhere. And this used to be very rare that at least it is accessible in each and every place. But today, I mean, everything is possible with uh, the facilities that are provided to us. So the organization has to ensure that at least these kind of tools and um, practices are followed. And at the same time, it is used. I mean, sometimes it happens that like, okay, a new thing is put into practice, but there is no monitoring whether it is in use or it is not in use. I mean, just having systems in place, but not in use is as good as you don't have it. Correct. Yeah. So these things are there. Of course, I mean, we are uh, living in this new normal now, and that is again going to continue for a long time. But at least the good thing is that like, we are having means and uh, the communication channels to continue our conversations and at least do the work effectively and efficiently. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, we have had a good conversation for over an hour now. So before we end this particular episode, uh, what is that one message you want to give to the audience uh, today? One message to be given to the audience. I have spoken a lot. Uh, but still, I would just uh, like to say that, like, okay, see, everybody, individuals and companies who want to grow, right? 
people grow faster than the organizations so having that thing in mind that like okay in fact i am trying to grow and i am trying to make the best what i can what why is my company not able to cope up because that is what starts building up the negativity in individuals and they start looking on what good is there outside okay but only if you are a part of that particular uh, game you will realize that like okay i mean you are only seeing the positives and not what goes besides or underlying that right so i would want to give this message that at least stay in sync with whatever is happening around be open be have, uh, have that ownership uh, kind of a mindset and not an entitlement mindset because then you become a kind of receiver that like okay i should get this i must do this i must be getting this thing by now so that entitlement mindset is what basically kind of troubles the individuals a lot right so that is fine another thing i would just mention for that i am i work with a great team okay in fact in my organization we have a great team we kind of share ideas we fight we uh, we kind of talk about it we kind of agree upon we have our own opinions and then we kind of but the final thing is we come up with the best possible solution that can work for sure but if there is nothing i mean let's say if i had proposed something and after a lot of discussions iterations and if things don't work i don't have to take it as a negative thing that like okay it was not my idea was not acknowledged maybe because you already gone through the our discussions and you found out that this is not working and that is the reason why it is not there but that should not stop me from kind of coming up with another another idea like that or anything else that can improve the workplace and uh, everybody else's life as well so that is very important because i mean sometimes feedback is taken as a criticism right feedback means criticism in fact i have been told this thing so i think is understood that like okay i was criticized but that's not the case understanding that like okay it is for a reason it is for a purpose maybe it is not for now i mean those kind of things are something which can comfort you right amazing and uh, thank you for being on this show and uh, with your experience with your knowledge and sharing all of that golden nuggets which can help people in building the organization culture for the leaders and for employees how they can grow with this organization culture so thank you for sharing your insights uh, and uh, yeah thank you for all of those who have been watching us live and uh, people who have been interacting especially ananta balaji we had kaushik who joined earlier right so all of them and people who are going to watch us later on the recording as well thank you for being here and watching us and i'm sure you are going to learn a lot of things from here so thank you thank you vimal once again for being on the show <laughs> Thank you thank you very much Fata and thank you one everyone who is watching us live and who are going to see it in future as well thank you so so much right okay so we end this particular episode have a great night and uh, stay safe stay blessed yes